Um, can everybody hear me? I've, I've been told that to win a crowd, show photos of kittens doing cute things. <laughs> so I'm going to start with that. You know, no pretension about it. Go right to like the jugular. Get the cute cat photo out of the way. Bring people in. I'm going to ask you to stand up. The people who you can't talk to for this activity are the people on either side of you. So you're going to have to try and find someone new. And I want you to try and find your doppelganger in this group to the extent possible. Right? So be creative. Try to find someone who's like you, um, but who you don't know. The pair, the pair that does this the best, right? Um, when, once you find your doppelganger, you visibly see them. Connect with them. Talk. Brainstorm why you're doppelgangers. Come up with at least 10 reasons why you're doppelgangers. And the first group to come up with their 10 reasons, put up your hands, and you'll win Creative Morning Cups. <laughs> so take a look around. Find your doppelganger. Find that person you don't know. Brainstorm why you're doppelgangers. And when you sit back down, maybe one eternity later. <laughs> what a beautiful example of symmetry between two people. Um, and it was really exciting to see everyone get into it and to see that kind of like um, bitterness when they came first. It's like, wait, we were so close. <laughs> And I'm sure everyone was close, but um, I really appreciate you taking the time and indulging in this activity. You can come back, take a seat wherever you're comfortable. <laughs> so, <coughs> can you hear me in the back? There, sh there should be a mic system. Hopefully I'm amped up. Hopefully the, the audio comes through. I've been asked to speak on symmetry. What I want to leave you with today is that there are many ways to find symmetry. Symmetry can have more than one axis. I was born on the land of the Métis, Anishinaabe, Blackfoot, Cree, Nakota Sioux, Salto, and Dene people, and wish to acknowledge their welcoming and our treaties. I teach corporate sustainability in the MBA program at the U of A. I'm a managing partner at Alift Partners, a for-benefit consultancy. And I work as a servant of servants with Islamic Family and Social Services, IFSA, an organization that's been providing culturally and spiritually sensitive social services in this province for more than 25 years. A part of what we try and do is make my city, Edmonton, a city that I really dearly love, feel a bit more like home for people, whether they're newly landed, fourth generation, or just looking for belonging. Belonging is all about seeing yourself in your environment. It's finding your symmetry in a group. That symmetry might be that we like the same things, speak the same way. I have something you need something, you need help, I need to help. Belonging is about finding symmetry, but sometimes it isn't obvious. I want to talk briefly about a major moment of reflection in my life. It's going to take me a moment to unpack it. This rug was a gift from my maternal grandfather. It's a gift from his pilgrimage to Mecca. He completed the arduous journey three times in his life, twice by boat. This rug is my only material connection to him, but it tells me so much about his life, his values, and his aspiration for his descendants. It's been with me through over 100 cities <coughs> and 20 countries. It reminds me of my forebearers and where I'm going. It makes me think about what message I'm sending down, and it's led me to wonder, what would a Canadian prayer rug look like? What would it even be made of? When I brought this question up with a friend, she joked 
that given we both live in Alberta, maybe it should be a petroleum product. <laughs> we laughed, we dismissed the idea of a polyester rug, and then we got down to business. Inspired by the pursuit of early Muslim pioneers who arrived over a century ago and built Canada's first mosque in 1938, this rug, this is the kitty version of the rug, there's a, a larger adult size, this rug is an effort to preserve and extend a piece of Canada's cultural heritage by incorporating Canadian motifs and materials into a powerful daily ritual. As a Muslim, my day is punctuated with regular check-ins, moments of ritual and worship where I stop what I'm doing to give thanks and reflect. I often struggle to find places to pray. I've resorted to derelict stairwells, snowy streets festooned with potholes, department store change rooms, public parks, and even mosques, anywhere that works. Like many people of prayer, I've tried to adorn the places that I meditate in regularly with beautiful rugs. These carpets help enhance the space and enrich my worship. They link me to communities and stories through the incorporation of different motifs, patterns, materials, landmarks, and processes. They connect me to places and stories from around the world. Prayer rugs are an amazing example of cultural fusion, localization, and integration. When I was working in Tanzania, I encountered prayer rugs made of thatch that incorporated simple pattern and vibrant contrast. In Pakistan, I found rugs made of richly knotted silk and elaborate geometric patterns from, uh, that reflected indigenous flora. In Turkey, I saw rugs made of cotton that depicted local landmarks beside our most holy building, the Kaaba. Prayer rugs are a mirror of the communities that make them. The project of envisioning a Canadian prayer rug was led by a team of intrepid youth who built Canada's first mosque, interviewed the descendants of early Syrian immigrants from 1871, and sought guidance from Cree and other indigenous elders on how the design could best honor the land and its people. The final product was designed by a Métis artist, Kit Walton, and a local master weaver, Noor Iqbal. Their finished prayer rug incorporated locally spun wool and dyes made from juniper berries. The ark represents the changing of the four seasons and a gateway to the divine. The tree in the center is the long pole pine, the provincial tree of Alberta that is also reminiscent of the cedars of Lebanon and Syria. The wheat at the bottom depicts our rich farming heritage and is a reminder of nature's abundance. The pattern in the back borrows from indigenous iconography for the Rocky Mountains, and the dual crescents at the top are an homage to the architecture of Canada's first mosque. Like many prayer rugs, it has obvious elements of symmetry and embellishment. The rug weaves a tactile story that knits together many cultural threads. It connects faiths, people, artists, and lovers. It takes a global tradition and roots it locally. It's a gift for our grandparents who built the mosque and something for our own homes. It's a small piece of the bigger job of making our home, Canada, beautiful. The rug is an attempt to use art and craft to mirror my grandfather and his journeys and show people their symmetry with this landscape. Dr. Syed Hussein Nasser, an eminent scholar on Islam and the environment, has said that in Islam, art and beauty are not a luxury. They are a necessity. Throughout the Islamic world, the Alhambra in Spain, the Taj Mahal in India, the Grand Mosque of Timbuktu, surrounding ourselves with beauty and art has been integral to our religion. If we can bring beauty to places, we hope it will cultivate beauty inside of us. Beauty, art, symmetry, a large part of this is our view of things. Symmetry isn't just what we see, it's inside of us. One of the blessed sayings 
of our tradition is that we are mirrors to one another. I've often wondered what that meant. What does it mean to be a mirror? The sage Habib Abdullah derived four meanings from this saying. One meaning, he said, is that we see good qualities in others and we can attempt to emulate them. Or we see bad qualities and we are reminded that we possess faults that we still need to work through. A second meaning is that when we see a fault in someone, we should help. Imagine that piece of spinach in someone's teeth. No, no, the next, the next tooth over. Just, just one more. In this sense, we're acting literally as a mirror to someone. We're helping them see themselves. A third meaning is that we see each other according to our own inward state. Everything we see in the world is a manifestation of what's inside of us. We project what's in us onto others. And the fourth meaning is that if we are complete, if we have reached enlightenment, we mirror the perfection of the cosmos. Symmetry, reflection, is a part of all our relationships. I'm going to invite you to pull out your smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, uh, a pocket mirror will do. Put your phone on selfie mode. And if you don't have a smartphone or a pocket mirror, it's okay for you just to stare at your hands. <laughs> And I'm going to ask you to, to bear with me for this activity. So put your hands out if you don't have the phone. And I want you to, to gaze into your reflection. <laughs> or your hands. Who do you see? Whose eyes do you have? Whose nose might you have? Whose cheekbone? Whose jaw? Whose fingers? We are all a summation of those who have passed before us. Great are tragic people who were resilient through vast narratives. As you look at your reflection, know that you are walking with your ancestors. Keep holding your phone. When we think of Simba seeing Mufasa, it may conjure up the baggage we're still carrying, but it can also remind us of how far we've come. A great poet and friend, Mark Gonzalez, in his text, Wage Beauty, reminds us of our genetic symmetry to our ancestors. If you are one who feels defeated, I encourage you to hold a mirror to what we victoriously survived over. As people who live in difficult times, we can never have enough reminders of human beings who embodied resilience and cultivated goodness. Feelings of frustration are natural, yet when isolated, they compound across generational traumas. They can metastasize into an inferiority complex. Reflect on the journey of a millennium that has led into you. Listen to your lungs. How powerful is your breath for even being able to hold air with the weight of empires that have attempted to impede that natural process of inhale, exhale, breathe. You can put your phone down. Listen to your heart. Give thanks to those who came before you, then leave behind a little more than you were given. Do not limit intelligence solely to the mind. See symmetry everywhere. Be a genius of the heart. What will you reflect? Symmetry isn't always straightforward. It isn't always obvious where symmetry lies. Symmetry can have more than one axis. We might need to shift our perspectives to see how we are alike. We have more in common than we think. Thank you. <laughs>